So this is an OSY fire sprinkler valve. This is a gate type valve and these are usually used to control the flow of water within a building. This one particular being used to control the water for sprinkler systems. So this would be installed near the bottom of the sprinkler riser to provide a point of control uh, within the building. Then there's other types of valves, for example, butterfly uh, PIV and WPIV valves, and these are all classified as indicating valves. So what that means is it's obvious just by looking at the valve, whether it is in the open position or in the closed position. If you were to take a look at a PIV or WPIV valves, they would actually have a little window that would say open or shut. The indicator on the OS and Y is the stem, OS and Y standing for outside stem and yoke. It could also stand for outside screw and yoke. Um, so when this stem is extended from the valve, you know that the valve is totally open. You can also see that this one uh, has a Potter OSYSU uh, OS and Y tamper switch installed. I put that on a couple days ago and I posted a video of the steps to installing this on my channel. So that's also used as a means of reporting whether the valve is in the open position or in the closed position back to the fire alarm panel. So to operate the OSY from the open position, the handle is turned clockwise, causing the stem to retract back into the valve body, allowing the gate within the valve to close. So now that the valve is fully closed, the stem no longer extends past the handle. So when you're looking at it, it's clearly obvious that the valve is now closed, tying back in with that indicating valve designation. Then to open it, it's just as easy. Turn the handwheel the other way. And now the valve is fully open. This is the bottom of the Potter OSYSU switch unit. So there's a small groove that's filed into the valve stem and then that rod from the switch rests into it. So as the valve is moved towards the closed position, that stem will move backwards, causing the rod to ride up out of that groove, activating the switch. So as it's moved towards the closed position, you see the rod come out of the groove, activating the switch. So per NFPA, it has to activate within two revolutions of the valve handle, I believe, and it activates after only about one and a quarter on this valve. Many times you'll find OS and Y valves locked with a lock and chain like you see here. This prevents anybody from tampering with the valve or closing it on accident. So in an emergency to operate the valve, the maintenance or fire department personnel would have to unlock the lock and remove the chain in order to operate the valve. You may also find OS and Y valve secured like this using a tamper seal. Although this isn't as secure and requires more inspections by the maintenance staff than a lock and a chain would, it does have the pro that in an emergency all one has to do is turn the valve wheel and then break the seal to close the valve. By breaking the seal it provides a visual indication that the valve has been tampered with. So you just turn the valve, snap the seal off, and then the valve could be closed. When it's time to reopen the valve after the emergency is over and the sprinklers that may have popped during the fire are replaced, the valve is then opened. And then whatever method of tamper-proofing the valve would be reinstalled, either the lock or the tamper seal. So this is where the valve connects to the actual piping of the sprinkler riser. And if I had to use one word to describe this, it would be rusty. Uh, even though the valve was fully operational, 
This was used on a sprinkler system for about 20 years, so the inside is a bit rusty. So as I go to close the valve, you'll see the valve gate start to extend into the pipe. This is a flange type valve, so the pipe connections will be made with large bolts um, onto this flanged face you see here. So now the valve is closed and water would not be able to flow through the sprinkler riser. Turning the hand wheel the other way. Now the valve is moving towards the open position. Now the valve is fully open and the gate has retracted, so water would be able to flow freely through the valve. Alright, I appreciate you guys taking time to watch this video. Uh, just a reminder, you find one of these in a building, don't mess with it. Just don't be stupid. Just leave it alone. It's not yours to mess with. Um, don't forget to uh, subscribe, leave a comment, leave a like, uh, and check out my other videos. Uh, I guess it's only fair that I mention this video in my System Test 19 video, so if you like my System Tests, go check out System Test 19. So, again, thank you guys for watching.